Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page Channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows. Calling Nick Carter. Another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. <laughs> this week's curious adventure is... Murder in the Crypt. Or Nick Carter and the Jekyll God. <laughs> You'll never know that I came here this time any more than you did the other time that I was here. <laughs> Those footsteps coming this way. It, it's Anubis. Anubis. Oh, it can't be. I am Anubis, guardian of the dead. No, no. I must be dreaming. I am Anubis, the jackal god. But you're not... No, no, no. from Abydos. Condition good. Come in. Are you Dr. Waldemar? I am. I'm Lieutenant Riley from headquarters. You called me about a museum guard who disappeared? Of course, of course. It's about Shelby, the chief attendant here at the Egyptian Museum. Uh, where and when did this Shelby disappear, Doctor? He failed to report to me as usual before leaving last night. And the guards on the door say he did not leave the building. Uh. We've hunted everywhere for him, but we haven't found him. Oh, you've hunted everywhere, have you? Yes, Lieutenant. Everywhere except in the crypt of Serfru. The, the, the what of who? The crypt of Snefru, an Egyptian king of the fourth dynasty. Mm. And where is this crypt? In the basement? No, it's on the second floor, directly above this office. Mm. It was installed especially for Professor Glidden, the archaeologist. He alone has access to the crypt. It has a special lock on the door. Oh, you mean he has the only key, huh? Precisely. I called Professor Glidden's apartment a while ago, but he did not answer. I presume he is on his way down here now. I hope he can shed some light on this mystery. Hmm. Nick, isn't this the Egyptian museum across the road? Yes, Patsy, it is. Never been in it? Mm -mm. Looks too much like a mausoleum for me. <laughs> Are we going in to look at the mummy? That, Patsy, depends entirely upon Professor Glidden. Who's he? That bearded man who is beckoning to us from the doorway of the museum. Oh, I see him. Is he a client of yours? Yes. He phoned just before you arrived at the office this morning. What does he want? That, I don't know, Patsy. Suppose we join him and find out. You say, Professor, that the Archaeological Society gave Dr. Waldemar the money to complete the museum. Yes, Mr. Carter. Mm -hmm. Provided that he would install a special crypt where uh, I could place the relics from the tomb of King Snefru for examination and classification. So the crypt is officially your property? For the present, yes. When my work is finished, it will be open to the public. I see. And uh, just where do I come in? I want you, Mr. Carter, to be present when we search the crypt. So there will be no question that Shelby is not there. This is Dr. Waldemar's office? It is. Oh, good morning, Bidden. Uh, this is Lieutenant Riley from headquarters. 
Hello there, little <laughs> brother. <laughs> Hell, Hello, Nicholas Dennis. Carter and Patsy, too. We haven't seen each other for a long while. Uh, now, don't tell me that you're looking for this man Shelby, too, Nick. I am, Riley. At the request of Professor Glidden. Oh. So since Dr. Waldemar has asked you to perform the same service, Riley, why don't we work together? We're glad to, Nick. Fine. So you wouldn't object if Lieutenant Riley helped search the crypt, would you, Professor? Not at all. Well, Riley, shall we adjourn to the crypt? Right, Nick. The crypt is on the second floor, right over this office. Come, come, Glidden, unlock the door. This is an intricate lock, Waldemar. It takes careful handling of the key. There. Uh, where's the light switch, Professor Glidden? Uh, just inside the door to the right. Very well, I'll... <laughs> well, would you look at that now? <laughs> I never saw a statue to resemble that beast. The body of a man and the head of a dog it has. I'd call it the head of a jackal, Riley. Uh-huh. Am I right, Professor Glidden? You are, Mr. Carter. That bronze statue is the life-size figure of Anubis, the jackal god. Anubis was the guardian of the dead, and his statue was set at the entrance of ancient tombs to keep out thieves. A jackal face is enough to scare anyone away. Come along, Riley. Let's look around inside the crypt. Okay. Well, here's a mummy case, which I suppose contains old King's nephew in person. Quite right, Mr. Carter. Yeah, now here's the old boy's throne. <laughs> it looks like the original Morris chair. Let's see. There's nobody hiding under it, Riley. Okay, Nick. See, now look over there. In the alcove over behind the statue. Now, what is it? An ancient Egyptian bathtub? That, Riley, is a sarcophagus. Huh? A stone coffin. The one that once contained the mummy case we just saw. Gosh, now it's a big thing now, ain't it? What's all this crazy writing on the front of it? Those are hieroglyphics, Riley. Inscriptions about old King Snafu. Oh. What's inside this thing, Nick? Oh, probably nothing now, Riley. Just the big open. Now, what is it, Nick? This sarcophagus is not empty, Riley. Huh? Shelby's in it. Oh. And he's dead. <laughs> Once again, Lieutenant Riley, I must reply that I know nothing of this matter. As I've told you, I scarcely knew Shelby. Now, look here, Riley. Your evidence against my client is purely circumstantial. Uh, Nick, it's a disgrace to the memory of old Sim Carter, the way his one and only son tries to misinterpret the bald facts. The bald facts in this case is this, Riley. You have no proof that Professor Glidden even came to this museum last night. Look, all I want is one more bit of circumstance, Nick. Dr. Waldemar, can you think of anything else that might be... Will interest him in this case? Now, let me see. Look, Nick. A strange woman coming down the corridor toward us. Ah, she looks like something revived from ancient Egypt. She walks like a cat. You can't hear the slightest footsteps. Quiet, Patsy. She's stopping close enough to overhear us. Uh, Lieutenant Riley, huh? I have it. Ask the professor just how he knew that Shelby was missing when he telephoned Carter this morning. I yeah. shall answer that question, Dr. Waldemar. Who, say, where did you come from? Who is this lady, Dr. Waldemar? Allow me to introduce Madame Dacla, our librarian. Oh, you have a library in this museum? Oh, yes. The library is in the other wing near the elevator. I was the person who informed Professor Glidden that Shelby was missing. I telephoned him this morning. After the search began. And Professor Glidden telephoned me, Riley, asking me to come here to protect his interests, which I have so far tried to do. Mm. Madame Dakla comes from Cairo. She's an Egyptian, well-versed in ancient lore and legend. Madame Dakla, do you really believe those old Egyptian legends? I must believe them. With my own eyes, I have seen the living Anubis walk through the corridors of this museum. But that statue couldn't possibly get out of a locked crypt. To Anubis, anything is possible. It is his duty to guard the treasure in the crypt. What treasure, Madame Dacla? The treasure that is found in the tomb of every Egyptian king. Anubis, the avenging jackal god, knew that the museum god Shelby sought the treasure. So Anubis sought Shelby and killed him and put his body in the crypt as a warning. Anubis is all-powerful. You mean you've actually seen this, uh, this jackal god walking around this museum recently? Anubis, the guardian of the dead, leaves the crypt of King Snefru and prowls these corridors every night. I have seen him do it. 
gosh. That will be all, Madam Dekler. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Nick, suppose we go through that crypt again and see what we can learn. An excellent suggestion, Raleigh. Patsy, suppose you go around and wait in the library with Madame Belka. We'll join you there later. Ah, Nick, this crypt is as solid as a rock. We've tested every inch of floor and walls and ceiling here. Yes, Riley, every spot we've tapped seems to be solid stone or concrete. Uh, Nick, suppose we check those measurements again, eh? Oh, no use in that, Riley. The room's 30 by 30, with four feet out for the door on one side and eight feet out for the alcove on the other. Mm. Uh, how big did you say that sarcophagus was, Nick? It's eight feet long and six feet wide. Practically the same size as the alcove it's standing in. Mm. And it's four feet, six inches high. Why? Well, I was just thinking, Nick. That's an awful big chunk of rock there. Well, Professor Glidden says this one weighs over 1,100 pounds. Uh, it's over half a ton. This goes to show that the floor in this crypt must be solid to support such a weight day in and day out. There's an answer to this case somewhere, Riley. Mm. Even if I don't know yet where it is. Come on. Let's get back to the office. Yeah. If I'd followed my better judgment, I'd have locked Professor Glidden in a jail cell first. It wouldn't be wise just yet, Riley. Uh, you're wrong there, Nick. And I'll tell you why. This door here is the only way in and out of that crypt. And this key, the only key there is now, belonged to Professor Glidden. Riley, I want to learn the motive behind Shelby's murder. There were some strange things going on around this museum. Three ancient anklets, one job. Come in, come in. Oh, it's you, Mr. Carter. Miss Bowen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, are you convinced that only Glidden could have entered that crypt upstairs? I never like to accept the obvious, Dr. Wallabar. Oh, there goes the closing bell. I must put these Egyptian relics back in the vault. Oh, we're out of here. A large vault, that is, Dr. Waldemar. Yes. The museum requires a large vault. I have this one built here in the wall, especially. Was it included in the original plans for the museum? Well, no, not exactly. This wing of the building was still unfinished when the architect died. In completing it, we made some minor changes. I see. Doctor, do you think Madame Dacla... You must excuse me for a few minutes, Carter. I must speak to the attendants before they leave. It was one of poor Shelby's duties. It will only take a few minutes. By the way, Patsy, Hmm? there's something on Waldemar's desk that should interest you. You mean that odd-looking jar? Mm Mm-hmm. It contains some ancient Egyptian perfume, he said. Hmm. Smells like roses. Very strong. You better put it in the vault, Patsy. All of them must have overlooked it. Can you smell it, Nick? Powerful stuff. Yes, I can smell it all right. Put it in one of the shelves in the vault. Oh. What's the matter, Patsy? I just tripped on a small step at the front of the vault. You didn't spill any of that priceless perfume, did you? Oh, I'm afraid... Yes, I did spill a few drops of it, Nick. Well, don't tell Waldemar. Oh, I hear him coming. Come out of the vault and look innocent. Okay. Well, Carter, another day is done. Oh, if you please stand away from the vault, Miss Bowen. I should like to close the door. Thank you. By the way, Doctor, was there any treasure buried with King Snefru? Probably. It was the custom... But it is also probable that such treasure was stolen centuries ago. Well, isn't Glidden interested in the matter of treasure? Possibly. But he's more interested in translating the hieroglyphics on the sarcophagus. Hmm. Well, Patsy, I must be going. You must be going? You mean you're going to leave me here in the museum? Only for a little while. I want you to go back to the library and have a talk with Madame Dacla, Patsy. Talk about what? I'll tell you that while we're walking to the other wing. Good night, Dr. Wallemar. Good night, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter isn't interested in ancient manuscripts, Madame Dacla. 
He wants to see the architect's plans for this museum. Oh, but he should ask Dr. Waldemar for those. I don't think Dr. Waldemar has them. Mr. Carter wants the original plan. I shall be glad to see if I can find them for you. I shall try the file cabinet by the door. Well, they're not under A for architect. And they are not under B for building plans, either. I shall try under M. Mm. Museum plans. What's that clumping sound out in the corridor? Yes, yes, here they are. In this folder. Plans for Egyptian museum to be erected Look, in the... coming through the door. Anubis. Welcome, Anubis. Anubis gives no greeting to those who defy him. I have never defied you, Anubis. You have sought the treasure that I got. Never, never. I have always... <gasps> Let go of here, whoever you are. Let go. Away, away, you. Hey, hey, now, what new mischief is going on here, Nick? O'Reilly, a dozen times. Huh? Patsy was just going to tell me. Who was it took Madame Dacklay away, Patsy? It was somebody, somebody who looked like Anubis, the jackal god. What? Really, Nick? Madame Dacklay had the plans of the museum in her hand. They're gone, too. Nick, this time we're going to look in that crypt upstairs first. Come on. Find that light switch now, Nick. Right, Riley. Yeah, there she is, laying right at the feet of that that creature Anubis there. You mean the statue of Anubis, Riley? Well, it may be a statue now, Nick, but I am near to believing that the thing comes alive when it chooses. Madame Dacla alive? Oh, oh, she... She, she's still breathing, Patsy. Oh, uh, what do you make of it, Nick? She's oh. been drugged, Riley. Quick, get her over to the door where the air is pressure. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Ah, she's coming around now. Where, where am I? You're all right, Madame Dacre. Oh, but I am, I am in the crypt now. And the last I knew, I, I was in the library. I knew it. I knew steel doors are no barrier to a new bill. Uh, help her outside, Patsy, so, so I can lock the door here. You, you lean on me, Madame Dacre. But I tell you, it is useless to lock that door. A new bill can pass through all barriers. Maybe so, but Professor Glidden can't. Come on, Madame Dacla, I'll take you back to the library. Then I'm going to put the professor in jail where I can keep my eye on him. From now on, there'll be no phone this Patsy. Hmm? When Riley opened the crypt just now and found Madame Dacla, did you notice the peculiar fragrance in the place? I must have been too excited to notice it, Nick. What was it like? It was the perfume of roses, Patsy. Musty, ancient roses. You should have recognized it. You mean... It was like the perfume from the bottle I spilled in Waldemar's office? Yes, Patsy. It smelled exactly the same. I admit nothing, Lieutenant Riley. I can't tell you how either Shelby or Madame Dacla got into the crib. It's like I've been trying to tell you, Clinton. It's very simple. You had two keys, but you only gave me one. And as I've been telling you, Lieutenant Riley, there was no duplicate key. Stay out. I'm busy here. I said stay... Hello, Riley. <sighs> Hello, Glidden. So it's you again, Mr. Nicholas Carter. Well, I don't care whether Professor Glidden is your client or not. We're not releasing him. I don't want him released, Riley. I just want to ask him a few questions. Tell me, Professor Glidden, when you sent those relics of King's nephew to the Egyptian Museum, did Dr. Waldemar have any chance to examine them? Why, no. They were all heavily boxed and crated. That is, everything except the sarcophagus. That was handled separately. Waldemar installed the sarcophagus in the crypt before I arrived. I see. I, I seem to recall that Shelby helped him set it up. The boxes and crates were all upstairs when I got back. But I opened them alone and set up everything myself, including a statue. That's all I wanted to know. I'm sorry, Professor, that you'll have to spend the night here. But I hope to arrange a release by morning. All right, Sergeant. Take the professor to his cell. Yes, sir. Come along, Professor. Say, Riley. Mm. Will you do something for me? Why should I? Why shouldn't you? You'll learn something yourself. And that's always a help in a murder case. Mm, all right, Nick. When can I lose? Fine. Pick up Patsy. She has all my notes. And you may need them. And both of you go to the crypt. Where will you be, Nick? I have to attend to another matter first. 
Now listen carefully, Riley. Mm. Here's what I want you to do. When you get to the... How long have we been in this crypt, Lieutenant Riley? Oh, it's about 15 minutes, Patsy. If you didn't have a luminous dial on your watch, I'd say it was hours. Why did Nick say that we should stay here in the dark? <laughs> You'll have to ask Nick that when he gets here, Patsy. Well, where did Nick say he was going? Well, no, it might be that he's calling on Madame Dacla. What? <laughs> oh, it's just a questioner, you understand. Oh, Riley, of all the ridiculous notions. <laughs> well, Dacla's boyfriend, Anubis, is right here beside us, Patsy. Do you see it? Yeah, this statue of Anubis must be solid bronze, Patsy. If nothing happens here, something will happen when I find Mr. Nick Carter. Only ten minutes more, Patsy. I'm getting so used to this darkness, I can see the sarcophagus plainly. Looks so big. Yeah, it is big. It's almost... What's that? I don't know. It sounds as if something was happening at last. Riley! Hey, what is it, Patsy? You're not, you're not getting hysterical now, are you? Riley, I smell something. The perfume of roses. And it's getting stronger. Well, now, what is the perfume of roses to do with all this here? Riley, Look! Look at that sarcophagus. Patsy, what we're looking at can't be happening here. But it is. That sarcophagus is rising straight up in the air. And I've always said that, that, that Sian was believing. Look, I see what's doing it, Riley. You, you, you can't tell me that, that anything that will make a stone coffin weigh, weigh in half a ton go floating up in the air five feet off the floor, Patsy. It's on top of an elevator, Riley. Uh, an elevator? Sure, that's what's lifting it. Well, glory be. You're right, Patsy. That's what that rumbling sound was. Riley. Yeah. The man coming out of the elevator with a flashlight. Wait till I draw my gun, Patsy. I'll fix it. You're too late, Riley. Uh, um, I have you covered. It's Dr. Waldemar. Why, Riley, that elevator is the vault from Waldemar's office. Quite right, Miss Bowen. I have you both covered. Don't try anything, either of you. Well, what would you be trying, Waldemar? There will be two new victims in this vault, Lieutenant Riley. Uh, two fools who, like Shelby, found out too much. But I'm sorry it isn't three. Nick Carter would be a welcome addition. You really mean that, Waldemar? Nick, where are you? Carter, how did you get here? I've been waiting for you in King Snepru's sarcophagus. And now if you... I'll kill you first, Carter. I doubt that. <laughs> okay, Patsy. Look out, Patsy! He's knocking over that statue! It's fallen over! <laughs> Professor will be along any minute now, Patsy. He called me at the hospital and asked they asked me to meet him here outside the crypt in 15 minutes. Said he wanted to examine the elevator in the crypt. Was Waldemar dead, Nick? No, Patsy. I only wounded him. He knocked himself out when he staggered against the statue of Anubis. Waldemar made a complete confession when he recovered consciousness. He's admitted that he was hunting for the king's treasure and wanted to find it before Professor Glidden finished translating the hieroglyphics. And he was using the elevator to make secret trips between his office and this crypt. Exactly, Patsy. When Waldemar completed the new wing of the museum, he modified the original plans and put his office at the end of the first floor corridor. Then he built this crypt on the second floor, right over his office. Evidently, the elevator was already installed, and Waldemar brought the sarcophagus up on top of it. And there was a sarcophagus standing in an alcove that was really the elevator shaft. Mm -hmm. The elevator itself became the vault in Waldemar's office. He disguised it with shelves and loaded them with curios. But it was still an elevator. And you think Shelby found out about it? Shelby must have helped Waldemar arrange things, since it was more than a one-man job. And then later, Shelby decided to look for the treasure on his own. Apparently. Waldemar confessed that he murdered Shelby for those very reasons and left the body in the crypt to blame the crime on Professor Glidden. And Waldemar put Madame Dacla in the crypt so Glidden would be blamed again. Exactly. But he didn't have to kill Dacla. She knew nothing, you see. He merely grabbed Dacla in order to get the original plans of the museum. Here comes the professor now, Nick. Oh, hello, Professor. Right on time, I see. I'm oh, so glad to find you here, Carter. I, I wanted you to be here when I examined the crypt in the elevator. I want no more surprises. Well, I don't think anything else is going to happen up here, Professor, but I'll be glad of the chance to do a little extra looking around myself. Oh, there's that Anubis again. He's on his face this time. Well, it was quite clever of Waldemar to disguise himself as Anubis. He really did resemble the statue. Well, look, Nick. Where, Patsy? There at the statue lying on the floor. Uh, why, the head is completely turned around. Yes, the fall must have knocked it loose. Oh, 
Give me a hand with it, Professor. We'll set it up again. Oh, certainly, Carter. Uh, it's pretty heavy. But... Yes, it is. It... Oh, no. Go! What? Go! Oh, Nick, is it real? I imagine it is, Miss Bourne. Why, this must be the treasure of old King Snuffroos. So that's where the royal treasure was hidden. Valdemar must have looked everywhere except in the head of this statue. So Anubis was really the keeper of the treasure. Well, congratulations, Professor. Mm -hmm. And I hope this discovery makes up for all your troubles. It does indeed, Mr. Carter. I shall now be able to visit Egypt again. just one problem that still bothers me. And I suppose, as usual, that the problem represents the crux of the whole case. It does. When I put that jar of perfume on the shelf, did you already know that the vault was an elevator? I did, Patsy. The elevator floor wasn't quite level. That's why you tripped as you went into the vault. But of course. But Nick, what made you think it was an elevator in the first place? It's quite simple, Patsy. There had to be an elevator to take the sarcophagus up to the crypt on the second floor. But, Nick, there's an elevator in the other wing of the museum. They could have taken the sarcophagus up that way and wheeled it across to the crypt. Patsy, how large is the sarcophagus? Why, well, it's eight feet long and six feet wide and four and a half feet high, didn't you say? Mm-hmm. And how wide is the door to the crypt? Four feet, according to your measurement. Exactly. Now, Patsy, do you think you could put a sarcophagus four feet six inches high through a door only four feet wide? Of course not, Nick. Of course not, Patsy. Not even Dr. Waldemar could do it. Up through the alcove was the only way. Waldemar probably hoped that no one would think to compare the size of the door to the size of the sarcophagus. And nobody did, except Nick Carter. was another strange experience of Nick Carter, master detective, called Murder in the Crypt, or Nick Carter and the Jackal God. Another of the curious adventures of Nick Carter, which are brought to you regularly by WOR Mutual. And now, Nick and Patsy, what about our story for next week? Well, next week's story is full of action, isn't it, Patsy? Action is right. You see, Nick investigated a murder on a lonely place called Skull Island. Yes, and there were only four people on the island who could have committed the crime. But it took a model of a clipper ship and a sea serpent to find out who the murderer was. It also took Nick Carter and a smart piece of deduction on his part to work out the answer. But what did a sea serpent have to do with the murder? Well, we'll tell you all about that next week. In the meantime, I'm glad I don't have to say sarcophagus again. So long. <laughs> so long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. In the strange adventure you have just heard, Nick Carter was impersonated by John Clark, Patsy by Helen Choke. The story was written for Nick Carter by Walter Gibson. Original music was played by Lou White. The entire production was under the direction of Jock McGregor. Next week at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter entitled Murder on Skull Island or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Sea Serpent. <laughs> this story is a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. The return of Nick Carter is produced in the studios of WOR and is broadcast over most of these stations every Monday evening at 9.30 Eastern Wartime. This is Mutual.